Hi, and welcome to another 5-minute tip. In this tip, I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a trick when it comes to modeling things and filling sort of, uh, sort of your requirements for your geometry. So here's an example. I have a cylinder here in a hypernerbs object. Let's just turn the hypernerbs off for now. What we have here is a cylinder with 16 sides, I believe which means that if we were to do some modeling like this where we fill this hole and then maybe extrude a little bit perhaps we needed to extrude inner again and then extrude upwards a lot what we would end up with is essentially a cylinder here that you know you could argue has too many sides uh, if we were to turn back on hypernerbs we're starting to get almost too much detail in this area um, and you know that that's not a problem in all circumstances but what if you wanted to maintain good geometry but reduce the number of sides that this cylinder has well here's how you would do it or at least here's how I do it first thing I do is I create a n-sided spline this is just a guide it's just gonna help me sort of remember how big my hole needs to be and how many sides it's supposed to have. So for now, we're just gonna kind of get it out of the way. Um, we're just gonna make sure it's the right size, roughly. You know, we can always add more, a few, uh, just a few more sides. So we can know roughly where it is and we can also move it up to the top where it needs to be. So we can turn that off for now. Now the idea behind this technique is really simple, but uh, it, it can take a little while to get used to. Basically, what we're going to do is select, I believe, every fourth edge. So we select the first one, two, and then um, I guess every, every fifth, or is it every fourth? Let's see. We skip three, select another one. And then we skip three, select another one, skip three, select another one, and then there's three. So actually selecting the first, second, third, fourth, and the fifth edge. Now, this works best, and it maybe only works with sort of groups of edges that have uh, an even number of, of edges. Let me explain how that works. If I were to select an outline selection here of this opening, it has 16 edges total up here. So that's an even number, so it's going to work. If it had 15 edges or 17, we may not have as good luck with this technique. So let's do that again. We select one edge, skip three, select every fourth edge, basically. So now what we have is we have these edges selected, and then we have these sort of um, intermediate edges just sitting there. And so now what we can do is we can actually just scale them. And so I'm just going to scale along the X, Z. And I know how much I'm scaling. It may not be immediately clear to you guys how much I'm scaling, but I'm basically scaling in to create this imaginary quadrangle. So if we were to use the bridge tool and now bridge these gaps right here, what we've done is we've kept the top surface of this object all quads but now if we were to do that same selection with the outline selection tool it's only eight edges so we've basically reduced the number of edges up here by a factor of two this is where that end side comes in we can select that end. we can turn the end side back on and now it shows up right here and of course you can use snapping or or just you can just position it by looking and you can make sure it's right where it needs to be and then if we go to the, to the top view we can sort of see how we need to reshape this now the cool thing about this being an end side is that we can now change it to eight because we know that there are eight sides and then we can go to point mode I'm gonna turn snapping on and make sure that I'm doing vertex snap 
and I should just be able to snap these edges to the edges of the uh, the unsided spline. There should be eight edges total. And so we just need to snap this eight times. And what we're left with, uh, we're getting some shading errors. I'll show you how to fix that. But what we're left with is an eight-sided opening where we used to have a 16-sided opening. So that's a good reduction. To get rid of this weird twisting, what we can do is, uh, there's, there's two things we do. The first thing we do is we go back to edge mode where we have that outline selected and we just rotate it. So we should be able to rotate it so it doesn't freak out as much, just like that. And then the other thing that I like to do is actually use the brush tool to evenly distribute these edges. Now it depends on the kind of modeling you're doing. If you're doing really hard surface precise modeling, you may be better off selecting these four edges manually and sort of scaling them and maybe using point mode and tweaking them into position. But what I prefer to do is actually select these edges. Now remember selecting edges like this is the equivalent of selecting the points. So if I control, or it might be command on the Mac, control click point mode, I get the points. And these are really the points that I want to modify. The same way that when we rotated these, these are the points we're dealing with. All the other points on the surface here we're happy with. So what I can do is I can choose the brush tool. And we have a nice big brush. Um, you know, we can always tweak the size by using middle click. Middle click up or middle click down. Middle click up and down is um, the intensity, the strength and middle click left to right is the size. And we want to change the mode from smear. We don't want to smear. We want to change that to smooth. And give it a strength of maybe 10% to start with. And what we can do is we can just paint over and we see Cinema 4D is just gonna sort of figure out what the sort of the even distribution for those should be. And when we're done all this, what we can do is we can repeat that thing we did earlier, where I'm going to select this eight-sided bit, extrude it up, extrude it inwards, and then extrude it up again. And we can turn the hypernerves back on. And we can see here that we have a much nicer distribution of polygons. We don't go from one density here to this extreme density up at the top because we have too many edges. And of course, if you wanted to make this look a little better, you would add a few knife cuts here. One here on the inside. There's some guys who have some really nice uh, subdivision modeling tutorials online. It'll give you a lot more tips. But that is my tip. It's a little bit of an odd one, but historically you guys have you guys seem to like my odd five minute tips. This one is a little bit longer, but I hope you guys enjoy this and I hope this is useful. It was just a little bit of geometry manipulation and uh, just a nice way when modeling a really easy trick. If you have a loop with an even number of edges, you can basically select every fourth edge and you end up with a situation where you can scale them up or down and then just fill in the gaps using the bridge tool. It's been working really well for me on some of my motorcycle models, so I thought you guys would like it too. Until next time, see ya!